in this video we're going to focus on ajax json file and api connection to create a nice chart based on the json file that we have so this is a very useful skill to know because with this you can start to connect even externally eventually so let's start to explore how to do this first in this video we're going to focus on how to create a bar chart with json data api with ajax in chart.js and this is a very good exercise to get introduced with apis and the json files so first of all this question came indirectly from some other video from, of mine which was about how to create a matrix chart with chart.js the matrix plugin in chart.js which is really interesting by the way it's a very unique one however here Junel Espiegel ask the following can you create a tutorial for more dynamic chart like ajax php and mysql well i responded i have a specific video or a whole playlist for that however i wanted to go a bit more in this area as well because this is an area that i still need to cover and that will be probably a very useful item as well for the question here so let's start and create first of all to start with, we need to go to chartjs 3com getting started. Just get the default code here immediately. And if you want to understand what this code really does, please check out this video here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to paste this and put it in here. Beautiful. Save and then refresh. So I want to give you a quick note here as well, because we're going to co work with a Ajax connection and with JSON files. It means we cannot work on a basic JavaScript file that you're normally notice. We are working now from a PHP file, meaning we're working here from a local host, local server. And if you have a, you can start with a local host or local server, or if you have your website, you can do it on your hosting. Very important because that, if, if you don't do it like that, it's not possible so what we're going to do now is this we're going to put in these values here but first of all I want to create a JSON file I already created a JSON file which is called financial report.json however this specific file is blank as you can see here and what I want to do now is I want to work on making something so you have understanding how to do it how to read something like this and later on you also have understanding how to implement that all right so what we're going to do now is basically this. We're going to make it very straightforward. We have here the curly braces. We will start to create what we call a JSON object. And then in here, always double quotations. And then we can say here, to make it simple, we're going to say financial report. And then colon. And then we want to say here there's an array value by using brackets. And you might notice this is very close to chart.js. And it is. So it's a good exercise, and now you have an understanding of it. So now we have these brackets, but then we have, of course, uh, curly braces, because we're going to create here the values that we have. So for example, in our case, let's look at our, our chart here. We have the month, and we have values. So what I'm going to do is here, we're going to use the same structure. We're going to say here we have month, and then here in the month, we can put in here, let's say, well, January. I'll just make it like this, comma. And then we're going to put in the next item. And then we can say here would be the revenue. Double quotation, revenue, or sales, doesn't matter. And then we put in here a value. If you have a value, no need for double quotation. So you're just going to put in your value. So we say here revenue is $90. And then we can say here next one, well, let's say cost. And a cost equals $30, comma. And then we have here the profit profit and then the profit equals sixty dollars all right so once you're done no need for quotation no need for a comma here you must skip the comma here if you put a comma here you will get an error i know in javascript it would not be a problem but in json it is crucial it's very strict in their coding principles all right so once we have this we can put a comma here and then i go to copy this six more times so we have it for every of our month from mar from january to july all right so how many we have here now three six final all right that's the last one remove here the comma here i can say here july 
June. And then we have here May. Uh, when we have more here is April, March, Feb. All right, so we have these here. Then we can do, we just keep this here. I'll just say here. This will be 120. This will be 90. This will be 120. This will be 150. 180 and then 150 and then here 180 and this will be 210 and finally here 24 this 210 and all that this is uh, 24 and this is 27 all right so if I save this now refresh nothing happens here of course because it's all in the JSON file so we have now a basic JSON file and I will go in another video I will go deeper in this stuff However, uh, here we have a basic one. So what we're going to do now is we're going to connect that. So we have this file, and this file, just to be clear, it's just stored on our hosting or on our local server or local host. So what we're going to do now is we're going to extract from that specific f uh, file the values that we need or the variables or the labels and let's say here the data numbers that we need. So what we're going to do now is here just here above we're going to put here now the ajax block so your ajax block later on we do some adjustments in here as well so don't worry but just follow along so in here we're going to do ajax we say your constant and this constant we can give it any name you want and i'll just make it simple by calling it xml http equals all right and then we say here new xml pay attention to the capitalized letters of xml and then capitalize h for HTTP, all right, and then we say here request with capital letter R request, and there we are. So now we have created a AJAX request. You know, this is an XML, XML HTTP request basically. So we say here this. Oh, before we even do this one, we will grab the URL where our financial report JSON is stored. So this here we need to grab as well. So we say a constant. We can just say URL or whatever you want to give it and then we say here the link of that so how to get this link here it's basically the JSON file for the sake of it I'm just going to copy this put it in here and then change the name with what we have here the financial JSON for report JSON so financial report and then here dot JSON all right so once we have that we have at least a link or the reference where we're going to grab our data so now we have this, we're going to do the following here. We say here this, we're going to grab this, because we're going to make the request now, and we're going to activate it or open a request. So we say open, and then in here, there are a few items. So we have the method, and the method stands for get, post, uh, put, if ever, or uh, these are probably the most common one, but I guess uh, get and post are very familiar. So, but in our case, we need get, by the way, because we're going to extract only data. We don't go to update the data, etc., etc only extract the data so what we had, and then the next item would be where would we extract that data here we would have the link or URL in this case our constant is URL so we just can place this and finally here is this async and asynchronized here is an Ajax so this is true what we want to do make sure here is that this here is a get method get is capitalized G A T all right so now we have this Indicating that we have created a uh, HTTP for XML HTTP request and We have all these items in here. We know where we have the, the values. So the next thing we want to do is here send this Command and once we send it what we want to do now is we want to wait until it's ready So once it's extracted it's first connected to that file or to that database or whatever it was it's connect in our case it's connected to the file of the financial report file and then start loading the data or extracting the data that we want so what we do here is just this and there's a dot on ready state so if it's ready well basically we're going to make here this we're going to do, or we're going to check what's the state it is equals a function and then in here we're going to do an if statement if following all right so if this dot state of a ready state so meaning that we want to figure out what is the state it is which goes up to one till four or zero to four is it equals 
4, which means it's complete. And this status equals 200. All right, so you're familiar maybe with the 404 error or the 500 error. 500 error refers to the database connection is uh, not working. And 404 means that they cannot find the page. And these are basically 400 error, 500 error, and we have also here the, the status of 200. And it's basically saying, we have a connection and everything works correctly. And I realize that this parentheses here, do not do this, sorry, put it in here. All right, so once we have this, what we're going to do now is, because this would mean basically the following, everything works here. The connection is success, or the connection has been success, and uh, it could grab the data. So it's ready, it's ready, and the connection was a success. So if that's the case, we can now show this response. So what, we, what we're going to do here, just to make it simple, console.log, and then we say this dot response text. So if I save this now and refresh, open up the developer tab, we should see here now our connection. There you are, beautiful. We can see all of the data that we have and we can really confirm this by going back here. So let's say here on the month, I'm going to give it a very weird month. Then you, just to confirm, we say here, save, refresh, go back to January, uh, financial report. Are we going, do we have that one? Let me double check here. Did I save that one? Yes. All right. All right, I figured out what it was. I had to hard reset or hard reload it every time. So let me show you again here because it was working. So if I go back here to January, save this, refresh, this works. And then if I do now something here, refresh, there you are, it works. So what I had to do was I just had to force it to uh, hard reload every time or at one time at least so that it will work correctly. So there we are. So now we have everything here. Let's refresh this back. You can see here, this works nicely. It will re hard reload every time. Now, so now we have this. What I want to do now is, because we have confirmed our connection. So what we want to do now is the following here. So we're going to change this response text to a variable name. So it's far more appropriate. So what we're going to do here is just very simple. We're going to give this instead of our this response value because one more thing there we have this here but this is still json we need to parse it into a readable file so what we need to do here is basically this uh, json dot parse and parse if you wonder what parse means parse basically means that you make something readable for in this case javascript so we're going to make json readable for javascript if i save this now refresh you can see here now, it is now readable JavaScript in the structure that you are very, very familiar with if you've seen my videos, all right? So now we are very close to our completion here. So what we're going to do here is now is I'm just going to give this a variable, let's say constant data points equals JSON parse, all right? So once we have this, the next thing what I want to do now and we can even confirm this console.log data points just to make sure are we having whatever we expect to have. Save this, refresh, there we are. All right, so this works nicely. So we have this here now. Next thing we want to do is let's start to extract. So what do we need here? In our case, we need two items. I want to grab the data. And this could be any one of them. Uh, it could be, uh, let's look here. It could be the revenue, cost, or profit. We, go, we will get one of them and replace it with this. And next, I want to check get the labels here. So how do we get that? Well, basically, if you know you have the financial report here, now we just need to get the arrays here. And this will be an interesting one. So how do we do this? Well, go on here and just say here, constant. And let's say here, this will be the uh, labels or labels month. And then we say here, equal to the following. So we have here the data point. So this is our starting point, the data points, and then we say dot. And then what we want to do is we want to grab here, in this case, the financial report value here. So that's basically this one. So we go into financial report, and then after we have to get one of those in a loop, basically. So you say here, financial report, 
And then we say dot. And then we're going to say here, what exactly do we want to grab? Or in this case, well, oh, sorry, we, we already have in the financial report, we're going to, to look through this first. And after we'll grab exactly the specific data. So let me show you here what I'm going to show you or what I'm going to do. We say here map, and then we create a function. Map will look through every item in that array, but then we're going to give it a specific condition here. We say here in this function, I want to go to the index. So these are the index numbers. So I'm just going to give it here index or elements. You can say elements or index, doesn't matter. Say go into the index. And in every index, I want you to do the following. I want you to just return only one item here. So we say return the index, which would be the numbers basically here. And then let's select here, which one would we like. If we are in, in the month, so in this case, our index will be month. So we're going to grab the month. So no, month. And there we are, month. And that's it. All right, so once we have this here, we should be able to do a console log for this. So we say here, console log labels month. Save. And then do we have another console log? I'm going to hide this one and just look at this. Refresh. And now there we are. We get all of these values here nicely. And if we would change this again, so we get a new one. No, oh, let's do a hard reload. There we are. Once we get a new one, we just have to hard reload for now here. And then that's how it works. All right. So here we're now quite close to what we need. So what I want to do next one, of course, is, well, let's say here in our case, we want to grab as well the, um, let's see here. What is it? Let's say we will get the revenue. We can get all of these. We can look through all of these and just only return only a single one in here. So what we will do is we'll just do it a few more times. Now here, this would be, let's say here, our cost. And all we do is here map in the function with the index, and then we want the cost back. What we can do as well is, you will do another one, it would be the profit. Copy that list. And if you look here, profit, and the final is a revenue, I guess we can do that one on the very top here. So we have these revenue, cost, and profit. So revenue. There we are. So then if I will copy this, let's grab the profit, save that, and refresh. We have now our profit values. And you can see the difference. It sees this as an integer or a number. It recognizes this is a number, and this is a string. Beautiful. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just display these values in here. So we'll, how will we do this? You might say, well, we just grab this, put it in here like that. But this will not work. If I save this now, you will see it will not work. And the reason why it doesn't work, it is not defined. And the reason why it's not defined is because this is an Ajax. So it's asynchronous, meaning here, remember this one here, the async? So this is now working against our structure here. Because this is starting to load first, and then this one is, or the order is not correct. So what we need to do is we need to move this into there. So we're going to cut this out. I'm going to move it in here. So also the constant, because these constants are what we call block scope, it is within here, everything. So we're going to put this all together. Make sure we have this proper indent, indentation here. And now if we would do this, this will work. And just to make sure that you can see the difference, we're going to put this in here. Uh, sorry, it will be profit. Let's put the profit in there. Save that. Refresh. And now we have here our profit digits all right so if we change this into cost you can see here now we get cost but cost is always 30 is always the same item here and we could even add up another item let's do another one here just for the sake of it comma here and this will be profit this will be the weekly profit this should be weekly cost should we make a label over this? Well, we could make a separate one as well. You probably know now how, and I will make, I will discuss it in another video as well. And this is basically, there we are. This is now what we have. This is absolutely beautiful. And now you connect it nicely here. 
And what happened if you would change this? Let's look here. Uh, let's go to here. Gen 2021. I'll make this 2020. So, for 20. I'm just making up. And refresh. You can see here it loads instantly, grabs all the values beautifully. And there we are. So, this is basically how you can create your API in here. And this is very, very useful if you're going more deeper and deeper into creating uh, my uh, database connections and if you want to learn more about database connections i highly highly recommend you to check out my charge as uh, mysql database series or my sql database series how you pronounce this it covers a lot of things about uh, connecting charge with your database these this together with the ajax and api will be absolutely fire 